They are scenes that are now happening daily in towns and cities across the country. In Liverpool, police officers coming under attack from a far-right mob. A number of officers injured as they dealt with what was described as serious disorder. Police in running battles with some of those in the city streets. They knew protests were planned, oh but images show the scale of the crowds. And this just a few miles from Southport, where the attack on children at a dance class seemingly lit the fuse. Similar scenes in Nottingham, bottles thrown as fighting broke out. And in Blackpool, where more fighting broke out in the crowd, their loyalties very clear. Any person organizing or taking part in the procession is committing an offense. In Belfast, too, a hotel housing migrants was the target, leading to clashes with police. More than two dozen protests have taken place across the country. Last night it was Sunderland that saw the worst of the violence, its streets bearing the scars today and prompting this warning that those responsible will face action. Well, the police need to lead operations in communities across the country where there has been both uh, violent disorder and thuggery on the streets, which is completely uh, unacceptable, completely damaging, and where the police need to know they have our full support, taking the strongest possible action, making sure that these criminals face the full force of the law. In Manchester today, a supermarket was ransacked by a mob as they ran from police. But the city also saw one of the many counter-protests today, anti-fascists marching with their message. <laughs> a sense that some are not willing to stand by as the wave of summer violence rolls on. And among others, whatever the response, clear defiance. Greg Milam, Sky News, Liverpool. The demonstration was organised by British right-wing radicals who are concerned about rising immigration levels, the perceived threat of Islamic extremism and what they see as the government's failure to ensure public safety. The events that happened, uh, you know, overnight, I am absolutely appalled and disgusted at the level of violence that was shown towards uh, my officers. This is the same officers who've been supporting this community for the last uh, 48 hours. Uh, some of the first responders who attended that awful scene on Monday and then were faced with that level of violence. From what was, this is not Southport, this is not the communities of Merseyside, this is a close-knit family-type community who were there at the vigil to share fellowship, show their respect, grieve, um, speak to each other about those terrible events and just show the families of those little girls um, how much um, this has impacted on them and yet that turned to a night of violence and I'm just disgusted and appalled. It was unreal. They just swarmed here. They were coming down his driveway and picking up bricks, smashing them on the road to make so that it was easier for them to carry and throw. One of the problems also is that they are giving the, the, the Muslim a very bad name and obviously m making the focus go in away from, the, from the, the, the grieved family that we, rightfully we should all be feeling sorry for them and we should support them. Basically they're taking all the expensive stuff. Um, the alcohol, cigarettes. I was I was watching the CCTV. What's happening? And then the point they just coming in. My kids was watching as well. And uh, you know, it's sad. Yeah.
protest escalated into clashes with the Metropolitan Police, prompting a strong response that included the deployment of riot police. Thank you. Thank you.
tackling them into smaller and smaller lists. This heavy-handed approach has raised eyebrows, especially considering the contrast with the police's handling of other protests, such as those by pro-Palestinian groups or far-left organisations. protesters were particularly incensed by a recent incident in Southport involving the son of a Rwandan migrant. Missiles thrown at police cars and buildings on fire. Ugly scenes in Sunderland last night. But what will this evening bring? Good evening. There is an increased police presence in a number of towns and cities across the country tonight, where far-right protesters have been gathering. In some places, dispersal notices or increased stop and search powers are in place to tackle antisocial behaviour, while a number of police officers have been injured in Liverpool and Hull, and there have been incidents this afternoon in Manchester, Stoke, Nottingham and Belfast. Riot police have separated rival far-right and anti-racist protesters who are facing off in a number of cities across the UK. In the last few minutes, police said they had made four arrests in Hull, where three officers were hurt during clashes. Our reporter Andrew Misra is in Liverpool, where police say they're dealing with serious disorder in the city centre, and a number of officers have been injured there too. Andrew. Kieran, we haven't seen the same level of violence that we saw in Sunderland last night here in Liverpool this afternoon, but there has been serious disorder, as you say. One police officer was even hit in the head by a chair. And a lot of anger we've seen here from rival groups of protesters. There's been a big police presence working really hard to try to contain those two groups. It has settled down a little bit now, and you can probably see behind me that there are still sirens, the police are still here and there's a helicopter, a police helicopter, still whirring above us. And at the same time as things felt like they were kicking off here, if you looked on social media, you were seeing very similar scenes of rival protesters around the country. We are expecting a statement from the Home Secretary about all of this any minute now, but what doesn't seem to have helped is that the weather has been very warm today and that seems to have created a pretty febrile atmosphere. That is disgusting. The weekend, but no end to the disorder, chaos. The lack of transparency surrounding this incident has fueled public anger and mistrust, creating fertile ground for anti-immigration sentiment. <laughs> There's girls laying on the floor. Have you seen the pictures of them bleeding from different holes in their bodies? Seven, eight and nine year old little girls. That's enough for me. That brings me out on the street. And I'll stay on the streets until something changes. That's it. A wave of unrest erupted in the heart of London Downing Street yesterday as British patriots took to Downing Street to voice their concerns over rising immigration levels insecurity and the spread of Islamic extremism in Britain and the perceived failure of authorities to address public safety concerns. <laughs> the protest quickly escalated into violent clashes with the Metropolitan Police, prompting a heavy-handed response that included the deployment of riot police. Guys, the UK has never sent out riot police when the pro-Palestinians or other far left are protesting in the UK. 
But this time, a riot was sent out to stop the British people who have the right to protest in their own country. I think this is the reason more protests will surface daily. The Patriots were protesting against the Southport incident Southing Save Our Kid as the police were not willing to give an appropriate answer to what happened. Let's watch as it started where the angry population was shouting Save Our Kids. Save Our Kids! 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 Those were the British population against illegal migration as this has put their kids into danger. Because the incident at Southport was done by the son of a Rwandan migrant, and the country keeps bringing in migrants, Islamists and more and more people, releasing prisoners to free up space, gang stars and more. So the British people are saying, enough is enough. And that's why chaos had to erupt, leading to the arrest of many people already to set an example. The protesters' chants of save our kids reflect their fears about the impact of mass immigration on their communities. They believe that the influx of migrants, including those identified as Islamists, criminals and gang members, has led to a surge in crime and a decline in public safety. The government's decision to release prisoners to accommodate the growing migrant population has further exacerbated these concerns. The heavy-handed police response to the protest, including the arrest of GB News presenter Martin, has inflamed tensions and raised questions about freedom of the press.
The perceived double standard in the police's handling of different protests has fueled accusations of bias and discrimination. This event marks a significant turning point in the ongoing debate over immigration in the UK. The whole purpose of the approach we're taking at the moment, which is to say to those people who engage in this criminal activity on our streets that they will be held accountable, is to deter them, to deter but them it's not and working, others from is it? doing this any anymore. It's well, not working, is we, it? Because we, are, we had we had a situation a where there was a meeting with the police chiefs. We then had the press. We then had the press conference, yeah. and since then we've had riots and disorder in nine cities up and down the country. The, the, respectfully, uh, I get. Not, I completely see where you're coming yeah. from, but it's not working, yeah. is it? Well, can I just say, this has all happened in the last few days. So we need to now take stock over the next day or so. We need to see what happens today. We will, of course, be meeting on Monday. We will need to see what the picture is, what the intelligence picture is. We need to look at, at the actual information available to make decisions about what's, how we best then proceed. But at the moment, our focus is on dealing with these criminals, arresting them, getting them into court, into remand if necessary, but dealing with them first and foremost. Minister, four weeks in, have you lost control of the country? No, look, we've had a really tragic week, starting with that awful incident in Southport on Monday. We've had some uh, public order disorder this week, uh, and that's clearly causing lots of concern around the country. Can I just also say, I think the police who've had to deal with what happened in Southport on Monday and then deal with this public disorder during the rest of the week have done a remarkable job and I want to pay tribute to those officers and I also want to say that a number of them have been injured in the course of the week and our thoughts should be really with those officers doing their job, keeping our communities safe and have found themselves injured. Um, is it time, what's the government going to do? I mean, in, in terms of, obviously well, clearly, the police are there, but what have we got a plan with the court sitting through the night? How is the government going to actually now deal with what is happening? So on Thursday, the Prime Minister called um, uh, chief constables together to talk about whether they had all the resources that they needed to be able to deal with this criminality on our streets. They reassured the Prime Minister that they did. They've had mutual aid plans in place for, for many years so they can move um, officers around if needs be. There are of course uh, the criminal justice system and we want to make sure that if people carry out this disorder on our streets they are brought to account quickly, they are arrested, they are taken through the court and if that means that the courts need to sit longer, that will happen. The Lord Chancellor is in conversations with the judiciary about that. And if they need to go into prison, that there are places available. And again, the Lord Chancellor has confirmed that is the case. Those places are available. So what we want to make sure is that people understand if they engage in this criminal activity on our streets, the looting that happened uh, in my constituency last night in the city centre, they will be found, they will be arrested, they will be brought before the court and there are consequences for their actions. Would, That's the message that we wanted to send out this weekend. Would you support the courts and judges in the courts taking uh, taking the same sort of stance that was taken towards those Just Stop Oil protesters when they were handed jail terms of four or five years? The government now faces the challenge of addressing growing public discontent while maintaining order and upholding the right to peaceful protest. Moving forward, open and honest dialogue is crucial to finding sustainable solutions that balance the needs of both migrants and the host community. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel.